12 rules for profitable poker. The purpose of this video will be providing 12 rules that if you follow, you will make more profit in poker and stay up till the end because I'm, I have some bonus for you that, of course I wouldn't say the best rules in the beginning only, but I'll leave it to the end and you won't regret. So watch this video and if you like contents like this, contents that help you make more profit in poker, I got hundreds of videos in this channel. Consider subscribing, consider liking this video only if you enjoyed what I'm about to tell you and let's go. The first rule is search for reliable information and answers. And why did I put that as a first rule? It's because many people will tell you many things, but some of those people will tell you things that in the end they don't even have results in what they are telling you. So why would you mind listening to them if they don't have the results that you want to achieve? You want to find answers from people that have better results than you. And you can also find answers through apps. For example, I tell you, Poker Calc app is an app that every poker player should have. Not only Texas Hold'em, but poker players that play Omaha or other games because you can see your equity versus the other hands. And the more hands you see, let's say for example, you got a flush draw and an over and you're playing against someone who has a top pair and you wanna see what is your equity versus this guy. You can put in this app and you can see that your equity is not that bad. So maybe it makes sense, for example, if you have many over pairs in your range, for you to be really aggressive and try to make the guy fold, because in case he calls, you still have like 45, 44, 46% equity, which is pretty much a flip. Another app that I highly recommend you to have is Poker Bankroll Tracker, or any other app that you can track your winnings and losses. Because if I could tell you the best mirror that you have over your game and over the edge that you have over the players you're playing against is your graph. When you see your graph, you're seeing a mirror of your play. Of course, there is variance inside of it, but I'm gonna show you a graph from a student of mine over 100 sessions. And I'm gonna also show you my graph over 150 sessions that I played four years ago when I played one two at the Horseshoe Casino in Chicago. And you can see that both graphs show that there is a tendency for profitability. There is, it's showing that both graphs are profitable. Like you can see that there is a tendency upwards and I could only see that because I gathered my sessions and he, and he gathered his sessions so we could see both tendencies. I like to see this guy's graph because it was great to see that he is profitable most likely because I can see this tendency. And the more information you have, the more information that is accurate, the more you can base your decisions into those informations. So you can bring decisions to your own life based on the information that you gather over this app. So I highly recommend you to use both of those apps. And there are other apps as well. I'm not gonna be telling you all the apps. If you want, I can make a video about that. Let me know in the comments. And let's go to the second rule. The second rule is be reasonable, make sense. And why did I say that? It's because poker is a game about logic. Poker is a game about decision making. And many times when my students come to me, my personalized one-on-one -on -one coaching, and I'm talking to them, sometimes the reasons that they tell me why they did what they did are great and it makes sense. But sometimes it doesn't. And when it doesn't, that's a problem because your decisions should be great decisions for you to be profitable by poker. But for you to make great decisions, they need to make sense. They need to be reasonable. So that's why I'm saying always be reasonable. Whenever you make a decision, Try to say it out loud, why did you make that decision and really try to understand if that makes sense. Because if it does make sense, you will be already doing something that many people don't do, which is making decisions that make sense. And if you're already doing this, most likely you are having better results than the average because the average loses money in poker. For you to be profitable by poker, you really gotta be above average. Otherwise, you will be just another guy that loses money little by little or you're gonna be below average that is a guy that loses a lot of money because i say a lot for my students that play poker bad is really expensive and if you want to play poker and have fun it's nice for you to make poker as a profitable hobby or even as a very profitable business for you you know and that's why i put this rule as a second one the third rule is don't be soft be anti-fragile and first you gotta understand what is being anti-fragile Anti-fragile is the opposite of something fragile. This is a fragile thing. If I drop and let it go, this thing will break. That's what fragile things do. And, but anti-fragile things, they don't only resist 
to the impacts that they suffer. They actually become better over those impacts. So an anti-fragile person is a person that whenever it goes to a very hard moment, a, a very big impact, a very big failure, a very big mistake, instead of breaking over this, no, it's gonna use that to make him stronger. So he's gonna become stronger after the bad things that happen to him. That's what being anti-fragile means. It means that whenever you get fucked up in a situation, instead of breaking, instead of going down, instead of giving up, no, you're gonna use that impact to level up. You're gonna become stronger. The fourth rule is have a stoic mentality. And stoicism is the most practical philosophy I have ever came across. It focuses a lot on rationality, self-control, and detachment from external circumstances. Because in poker, what matters the most is the quality of your decisions in the game. But sometimes you're gonna make great decisions, but the deck will screw you over, you know? The deck will fuck you up. The deck, you will have like 90% equity versus 10% equity in which is a $4,000 pot. And guess what? 10% is gonna happen. But if you don't have a stoic mentality, you're gonna tilt, you're gonna get mad, you're gonna get angry. You might start making bad decisions. While if you have a stoic mentality, you come back on track to focus on what is under your control, which is your decisions in your day, your decisions at the poker tables, your bankroll, uh, how did you build your bankroll, how are your stuff going, are you making sure that you're playing well, are you making sure that you're calm and relaxed and keep playing your game, keep bluffing enough, keep extracting value value enough from the hands that you want to extract value? Are you able to call the hands that you're supposed to call or to fold the hands that you're supposed to fold? In the end, what matters the most is the quality of your decisions. And having a stoic mentality will help you on keep on track on doing the right things instead of being mad over what happened that is not under your control. And in the end, start making bad decisions because of that. The fifth rule is be extremely competitive and adaptable. And why do I say extremely competitive? Because poker is a very competitive game in which whenever you sit at a table, in case you're a beginner or you started playing poker not so long ago, there is no shame on there being other players that are better than you. But don't allow yourself to be fearful of them or to respect them more than you should respect. You should play what your range advises you to play. Actually, you should play what your range plus exploit range advises you to play. Because, okay, let's say you know that you have a specific range from the hijack. Okay, so you have that range. But let's say that there's a very good player on the big body. What you can do is to get that range and make it a little tighter. Why? Because the big blind is a very good player and the big blind is going to most likely be the guy that is going to play versus you this end. While in another case, let's say the big blind is a whale that is very bad player that most likely will play really bad, will be calling with a bunch of garbage, will be playing pretty bad post walk. you can do the exact next thing which is opening up your range a little more so you're being competitive, but you're also being adaptable. You're adapting to the situation that presented to yourself in the table in a way that you maximize your profits over those situations. So you're gonna play more hands versus the bad player and less hands versus the good player. But you're not gonna be afraid of a good player. You're not gonna stop playing hands versus the good player. No, if you have pocket 10s, pocket 9s, pocket 8s, pocket jacks, aces, ace king, ace queen, you wanna play versus the good guy. Of course, because overall your, app, your hand is better than that guy's average. And hopefully, when a player is good, he's aggressive. He's kind of annoying because he's all the time raising and putting pressure on you. So when you have a good hand, hopefully that guy is gonna try to put pressure on you, to be aggressive on you, you have a good hand. So you're gonna take advantage of that and try to make profit over that, you know? You're not gonna be fearful. You're gonna be aware. You're gonna be conscious, you know, of what you're doing. And you're gonna be basing your decisions on logical reasons. You're gonna make sense of your decisions. You're gonna be reasonable. And you see that everything connects and, and I didn't get even close to the best ones because I left the best ones to the end. The sixth rule, which could easily be the first rule, is have a solid bankroll management. And why is that? Man, variance is a reality for any poker player you know, anyone. The good ones and the bad ones. We will all go through variance sometimes. 
and variance is going up and down. Sometimes you will face variance and you're gonna win a lot over three days. Other times you will face variance and you're gonna lose a lot over three days. But if you don't have a solid bankroll management, what will happen is that when you go through those bad moments of variance, you're gonna break your bankroll, you're gonna go broke. And when you go broke, you're gonna stop playing poker and you're gonna stop making profit from poker if you're profitable or you stop playing the game that you love. If you have a solid bankroll management, you will be ready for those down moments in a way that in case you go down, you're not gonna go broke. You're gonna, you, you might go down in stakes. You might, let's say you play two five and now because you went in a bad run, you come back to play one three, one two, two three, but you didn't go broke because you have a solid bankroll management. Basically, whenever you play a game, you are not supposed to be fearful of losing your stack because sooner or later, you will lose your stack. We will all lose our stack. We can do that by calling a big bet over a guy that we thought he was bluffing, but he had a value. Or we can do that by bluffing and someone calls. Or we can do that by having a big bad beat in which we went all in, the guy called, and you had 80% equity, but in the end, the 20% of the guy hit and you lost. But sooner or later, you will lose your stack. So if you don't have a solid bankroll management, what's gonna happen is that sooner or later, you will go broke. And when you go broke, you're gonna stop playing. You're gonna stop having the freedom to choose what you wanna do because your money is not allowing you to do the things that you wanna do. So make sure you always play with enough bankroll to allow you to lose one stack, two stack, three stacks, and keep playing if you want. In case you lose and you're mad and you are tilted, don't play. That's another thing that we're gonna talk later, but if you're mad, if you're tilted, it's better not to play other than being played and losing money little by little because you're mad, so you're making bad decisions because you're not good in your head. So make sure you always play with a calm and relaxed state of mind, you know? So be aware of that. Make sure you're self-aware of what is happening to your head. The seventh rule is learn GTO fundamentals. And why is that? Poker evolves really fast. 10 years ago when I started, poker was way softer than it is today. And today it is still soft because many people play to have fun, many people don't study, many people do many things. But in 10 years from now, people will definitely have a bigger level. So by learning GTO fundamentals, you have a north of what should you do because GTO doesn't base itself on I think that's right or not. No, GTO plays millions and millions of hands on millions and millions of different styles. So in the end, GTO understand what is the best style to play over those millions of hands. So in the end, GTO bases itself on stack depth, on nut advantage, on range advantage, on math, on, a, on combos. So GTO will give you some information that you can definitely look at GTO and try to model to your reality. So for example, preflop. Preflop, GTO preflop is a great source for you to learn optimal preflop because you see the ranges that you should play from the under the gun, the ranges that you should play from hijack, the range that you should play from button, etc. So when you see those range, you see what GTO is advising you to play in those ranges. But when you go to the table and you play against human beings, those human beings will not be balanced. So you can adapt those ranges to your reality in a way that you maximize your profit over them. But you only know the range in the first place because you know GTO fundamentals. So the app I use, the software I use for GTO is GTO Wizard. There's a link in the description below where you can use it for free. And if you want to purchase, purchase. But if you don't, you can use a lot of things for free as well in the preflop. And I tell you, start learning GTO fundamentals on the preflop. And preflop, if you learn GTO and if you start using GTO ranges in your preflop, you're gonna start like printing money on the table because other people will be playing a bunch of hands that they weren't supposed to be playing while you are playing close to what you should be playing. So when you're playing close to what you should be playing, you are most likely making profit over the other people that are not playing close to what they should be playing. Poker is a predatory game in which for you to make money, other person has to lose. So for you to make money on other people, you gotta make better decisions than those people consistently. You gotta have an edge on them. So how can you acquire edge? 
by learning things that they don't, by doing better things that they do. And one of the things that you can do better is learn GTO fundamentals and use those fundamentals when you're playing poker. And that talks pretty well on the eighth rule, which is be a predator. Because for you to make money, other person necessarily has to lose. So for you to make money in poker, you gotta make profit over the other people. You know, like for you to make $100 in profit, someone lost even more than $100 because there is rape. So by being a predator, you become like a hunter. Poker is a game about hunting, you know? Like when you're in a table and you look at a guy making a bunch of mistakes and he has $1,000 in front of him, and most likely he's gonna lose that thousand dollars over the next hour, two hours, three hours. That he, that guy is a great opportunity for you to make money on him. And what are you gonna do? You're gonna adapt your game to his game in a way that you maximize your profits over them, and you really eat his money. You know, like poker reminds me a lot of the wildlife. And in the wildlife, nature is aggressive. Nature is competitive. Nature sometimes is brutal. And nature is egotistical as well, like in a way that nature just care about their life. So if you're a hunter, you want to eat other animals and you, you don't care about how those animals are feeling, etc. I know that might sound ruthless. I'm just trying to put in your head that poker is a game about making money over others, about attacking others, about being aggressive. And predators in nature are aggressive just as you should be in poker. Profitable poker, good poker players are aggressive, good poker players are annoying, good poker players attack, good poker players put people on tough spots, and by being a predator, you should do that to the other players. I'm not telling you not to be kind to others in what you say, I'm not saying I'm telling you to be a douchebag, I'm telling you to be an annoying poker player in your decisions at the poker. But you can totally be that and still be kind, still be polite, in what you say, still be talking, but in the end, if you're there to make profit, you need to understand that you want to make profit over other people, and to do that, you gotta make other people make mistakes, make other people fold the best hand, you gotta make other people call when they weren't supposed to be calling, you gotta make other people lose money to you, and that's why bringing a predator is so important if you want to be profitable in 2023 or beyond. The ninth rule is build confidence, but stay humble. There is a fine line between confidence and humility, and confidence and arrogance. Many people are confident, but they are not arrogant, while some people are overconfident and become arrogant. But you can totally be confident and humble. How do you build confidence? By studying, by making good decisions, by having good results, by getting experienced enough so you understand what you're doing right and you keep doing that. That's how you build confidence. But you should still be humble to understand that there's a lot for you to learn, you don't know everything, there will be players that know many things that you don't, and you want to learn from those players as well. So the best way that you can play good poker, but still learn a lot in poker is to be confident, but staying humble. So never allow yourself to think that you're the shit, that you know everything, that you don't have anything else to learn, because that's just dumb, you know? Poker is a very complex game that that has many nuances and new things that are appearing that you should make sure you are studying and you are curious enough so you can learn those things when they happen, when they come to you. I learn daily, every day, through software or GTO or talking to you, like listening to your comments, even though sometimes your comments are not so good, but sometimes they are. I read literally all the comments you send on YouTube and I learn a lot from you. Sometimes in poker, sometimes in life, but I'm still learning and I'm not willing to stop reading your comments or to stop taking into consideration what you think because I know that sometimes I will learn from it and I want to do that. Poker is a game, it's not like soccer or like basketball that when you make 40, 35, 50 years old, you start going down. No, like poker is a brain game. So as long as your brain is still healthy, as long as you still have a good vision and you still are able to rationalize and make good decisions, poker is gonna be there for you. Like I can really see myself in 15 years from now playing poker and in love with the game still because I, I love this game, you know? So build confidence, but stay humble. That's a very important thing for you to do. 
Poker, man, poker is so complex. Poker has so many nuances. It, poker is great about life. Poker teaches a lot about life, in my opinion, about business management, about risk taking, about knowing how to deal with frustrations. We will all deal with frustrations no matter what in poker. Sometimes we're gonna face bad beats, sometimes we're gonna fall into a tournament that we thought that we could win the tournament, and that's fine. The most important is for you to get those bad things and try to build up over, the, over those bad things. Try to become better over that. Try to become more experienced over that. So next time you face a similar situation, you deal well with those situations and you make the best decision you can at the moment because that's the most important role, at least in my opinion when I'm at the table, is making the best decision I can. And the more I know about poker, the better I am, the better my decision will be. But I'm there to do my best and you should be there to do your best as well. The 10th rule is a rule that I learned through time and now I tell you, which is don't play tilted. Why don't play tilted? Because sometimes you will be mad. Sometimes you will be impatient. Sometimes you will be mad to what the cards did to you or to what someone did to you or in your life. Let's say you're going through a bad moment in your life. You fought with your girlfriend or with your father or with your mother and you're bad here. Whenever you're bad here and you want to play poker, man, many times in my life I did that. And 95% of the times I end up losing more money than I, than I won, you know? So why playing tilted? I understand you're tilted, but you want to do what you want to do. But man, it's impressive the amount of times that I play tilted and that I lost money. While when I play with a good state of mind, when I'm with my mind okay, when I'm with my mind right and I play poker, the chance for me to make money is way bigger. So whenever you're tilted, you're mad, don't play tilted. Or try to find a way to stop being tilted. One thing that I do is like when I'm in the table and I'm tilted and like, but I wanna still play, man, I figure out a way to come back on track to my mind and to play what I'm supposed to be playing, which is my GTO range plus my exploit range that I'm gonna do, like some changes in my range to adapt to the players in the table. What I do is I read books that bring me wisdom. One book that brings me a lot of wisdom is Proverbs from the Bible. Like, I highly recommend any of you guys, you don't need to be a Christian to read Proverbs and to take advantage of that book because that book brings a lot of wisdom. I'm gonna leave the link in the description, so make sure you don't play tilted. So if you're tilted and you wanna keep playing, make sure you find a way to not be tilted anymore. But if you're tilted and you cannot get away from this situation, just stop playing, go home, go watch a movie, go see someone, go do something you like, and there will be many other days for you to play poker. Rule number 11, which is have your things working well. What type of things? Anything. Let's say your vision is not so good and you go to the table and you're not able even to see the flaw. That's bad for you. So what do you do? You get a glass and you take your glass for you to be able to watch well. Or let's say you are playing online and your internet is not working so well. So you're gonna have to fix that internet because in the end poker is a game that you wanna build edge. And the more edge you have, the better your results you'll be. So by you not being able to see the flop well or to look at the players and try to find some tell or something like that, that's gonna be bad for you. That's gonna be an, an edge for the ones that are able to see well, for the ones that have a good internet. So have your things work well, always, because the more you have those things working, the more you have an edge over the other players, because other players won't have all of their things working well. So if you have all of your things working well, but they don't, that's gonna be an edge for you. So make sure always that when you decide to play poker, everything's fine, you're doing well, you're in a good state of mind, man, that really makes a lot of difference. You be in a good state of mind when you decide to play poker. You be good at looking at other people and be able to see well or hear well or etc. You, you know in your life things that the things that you need for you to be okay to play poker, for you to be with everything working well. So make sure you do that, you know? Like don't allow yourself to forget how you are feeling right now, how are you right now, how are your state of mind right now, 
because all of those things make a, make a big difference over the long run, over your results at poker. And when you see your graph after this video, I'm really confident that you will make changes in your game in which it's gonna make a difference in your game over the long run, in your graph over the long run, and in your results over the long run. Now, rule number 12, never stop learning. I already talked about that, but it's good to talk again that, man, like, poker is a marathon. Like, your results at poker will come through the long run. It's not about tomorrow, it's not about next week, but about what you're gonna do tomorrow, next week, in a way that you are always improving, you are always learning, you are always being a better and better player in a way that don't, don't fool yourself. Your results today are not as good as your results next year can be. And that's important because life is big, life is a marathon and poker as well. So never stop learning, always keep trying to improve your game. One thing that I tell you, read my ebook that is for free in the description below, that I'm sure that this ebook will make you have way more profit than poker, will make you make way better decisions in the game. So make sure you go in the description and read my ebook. And now the 13th rule, which is a bonus, is never play scared of losing money. Play aggressively. Man, what I see the most when I play, uh, especially low stakes, but sometimes in the highest stakes, people people show off that they are fearful of losing their two thousand dollar stack, three thousand dollar stack, and that's a disadvantage because good poker is aggressive poker. You should play aggressively. You should put people on tough spots. Whenever you're playing versus a good player, this player will tend to be aggressive over you and put you on hard spots. And what you should do, you should do whatever you are supposed to do because of math, because of that's the most profitable decision. You shouldn't be folding a big over bet in the river because it's a lot of money. You should be folding a big over bet in the river because your hand right now, in comparison of your whole range, it doesn't make sense for you to call such a big bet. That's the reason. It's not because, I'm, man, I'm gonna call $3,000 here and if I'm wrong, I'm gonna lose $3,000. That's a weakness, that's a leak. And this league, good players, will exploit that leak in their favor. So make sure you don't play scared of losing money. Make sure you play actually in a way that your decisions make sense. Be reasonable, make sense, always. So your emotions will make you weaker at poker. Your fears, your anger, any emotion will make you weaker. What is gonna make you stronger at poker is your self-awareness, is your knowledge. You gotta chase logical reasonings, you know? So in the end, whatever emotion you have, you should detach from that emotion and you should try to find the logical sense why you're doing what you're doing. And if the logical sense means that you're gonna have to put $3,000 inside the table because it's the best decision, that's exactly what you should do. And if you're fearful of losing the $3,000 because you cannot lose that money, you shouldn't even be playing in the first place. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, click the like and subscribe to the channel. Also check out my book that I did this book with a lot of care to you and it's for free in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, there are many other videos that are gonna show up in the screen as well that you'll also enjoy. The mission of this channel is helping you become a better poker player and see you next time.